Welcome back to Legacy Battle. I'm Michael Adams, my co-host tonight for the Gridiron Battle Zone, Brian King from Steelers Nation South, Rollo Coffin. We are joined for a career interview by a special guest. He's a 12-year NFL offensive lineman with the Bills, Chiefs, and Giants. He has played uh, every position on the O-line other than center. And in those 12 seasons, he only picked up 17 penalties. That's pretty impressive. You take off the first season where he had four, then he only has 13, so that's even better. But he's played in five Super Bowls, and he's played in 19 playoff games, which is good for 91st all-time in NFL history. So we're going to welcome Glenn Parker. Glenn, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Always good to talk ball. Absolutely. And uh, let's let's jump into it tonight. Brian, start us out. Hi, right, Glenn. So if I understand correctly, you were not involved in any athletic programs when you were in high school, but first began playing football uh, for Golden West, which is a, a junior college in Huntington Beach. Uh, how were you able to adjust to playing the game so well in such a short period of time, uh, despite not having that bedrock of fundamentals that kids usually pick up in Pop Warner or JV or varsity football programs? Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll take it from a different perspective. I think most kids uh, back then and even more today uh, pick up a lot of bad habits in Pop Warner and in high school. Um, it's If you don't have a, a bedrock solid coach who understands the next level, you have to learn at every level you go to. So I was lucky in that my line coach was an All-American in Alabama and was that good and my assist, the assistant O-line coach had been in the NFL. And so what I learned was the proper technique, the fundamental technique, the right way. I didn't have any bad habits. So I got to JC. It was seven games. I started there. I got to Arizona. No bad habits. I could pick right up into the offense and go. Um, and I think that's the thing we get wrong a lot of times. We think you had to play a long time with football. Unlike Football is the – the easiest job, easiest sport to be good at physically if you're an athlete, it's the hardest mental. So you don't need all those years in the background. As a matter of fact, most guys, most people I know and most ex-NFLers, we do not believe in letting our kids even play tackle until they get into high school. They shouldn't be in pads. So let's, oh. let's talk 1990 NFL draft here. Picked third round out of Arizona by the Buffalo Bills. Was there rumors of other teams taking you before they did? Uh, and what is a player, you know, like yourself, feeling waiting for your name to get picked? Well, uh, you, you know, that was a, well, that was a long day. Um, we did the first three rounds when I was picked. And, and I had initially been projected late first into the second. I slipped into the third. But if you really look, I was the fifth, I think, fifth offensive lineman taken, which in, in, in going to third round, obviously – there was a lot of different things that happened that year. Juniors could come out. So offensive linemen, they just didn't think much of us. But uh, it's, a t it's a weird day. You, you, uh, obviously, you, you're hoping you're going to get that call. You're hoping you're going to get that call. And then, you know, all of a sudden you might have friends and relatives call just out of the blue to say, you know, hey, what's going on in the draft? I'm not watching it. It's not like it is today. It was still a big deal, but it's not like today. And that gets your heart going because you, you're certain it's a team's call and you're not Aunt Flo. Um, and, you know, and, and that's the kind of thing, it's just kind of that nervousness of where you're going to go. You know you're going to get drafted. You don't know when. You don't know where to. There were inklings for me um, that I was – I thought I thought Raiders, that was the one that – and um, Giants had shown interest to. Uh, they talked to me a lot. Cowboys had talked to me a lot. Most of them didn't think they, I was going to be available for them. And – the Bills, out of nowhere, I had never had a single conversation with anybody on that staff outside of the combine. So it was, a, it was a shock to me. So for several years, you blocked for Thurman Thomas and Jim Kelly and that revolutionary K-Gun scheme. Tell us about that scheme and why was it so successful in your opinion? Well, it, it was successful. Number one, the scheme is successful because of our, our talent. When you have a tight end that you can flex out into the slot, and he's deadly. Now, of course, that's normal today, right? Tight ends today, they're not as heavy on the blocking. They're more like a slot. But back then, you had to have a hand. Your tight end was hand in the dirt. Well, Kevin McKellar, who the K-Gun, is that's what it was named for, was uh, Kevin McKellar. It, he, 
what he was able to do was put his hand in the dirt, block, get in the slot, and and you, what were you, you, had, you couldn't put a linebacker on him out there. He'd kill you. So you had to bring in a nickel. And at that point, now you put you take your you take Thurman, you put him out in the slot. You get him out of the backfield, you go empty. Well, n- now what are they going to do? There's nobody. I, I there is not a single linebacker in the NFL at that time that could have covered Thurman one on one in any type of space. It wasn't going to happen. So we had this talent that was able to move around, um, and a lot of guys could substitute in and out at different positions. So that's the number one. And and number two, you have to remember, today every quarterback gets the play called in, told what to look for and what's going to happen. Jim Kelly called every play himself. Now, at that time, probably a quarter to half the quarterbacks did. The other half got it from the sideline. But he was able to, hey, we got a great play here. We got a mismatch uh, personnel-wise. Let's go, let's go. And we'd snap that ball fast so they couldn't substitute. You know, just just, just like hockey, right? We got our guys on. They, got, they It's a shift change, let's roll. And they couldn't get guys on. And so they ha- they'd get stuck, and they'd eventually make a mistake, and then they'd eventually have to call a timeout or get scored upon. And it just rolled. And people didn't figure out that we were running our entire playbook for a couple of years. You know, I've heard people talk to me and they'll say, oh, you guys only ran about three or four plays out of that. And I'm like, man, you have no idea. We ran that whole playbook. They didn't realize it. They're too tired. But it's that it's that unique mix of, of talented individuals and a quarterback that can do everything. That's really what it, what it was. When uh... – you went to four – your team went to four straight Super Bowls and lost all four. Uh, and only other one team – only other one team has done that where they lost – went to four Super Bowls and lost four without a win. But in, that's a dubious distinction. Um, but in the same vein, it's a tremendous achievement going to four Super Bowls. It's very hard to do. When you reflect on the, that run, do you look at it as a disappointment or you look at it as we accomplished something great for four straight years? Well, you know, if – that I think what it's it's kind of akin to this, asking uh, Tom. It's it's kind of like asking, well, you were undefeated, but you lost the Super Bowl, right? You you, you it, is it a distinction that we we went to four straight? Just because we didn't want, win one doesn't mean there weren't four great teams. I was a part of four great teams. We won by far the the, the majority of our games, and and a lot of them. I mean. They're, there weren't a lot of losing games my time in Buffalo in seven years. Um, there are those that criticize, but you'll never hear NFLers talk about, you'll never hear any NFL players say, well, yeah, they sucked or they they got there but couldn't win it, blah, blah, blah. Because they know the vast majority of NFLers never got there, ever. There's Hall of Famers never got there. So they understand how tough it is to get there four times and back-to-back every year, the, the toll that takes – the time, you know, if it was if it was easy, then the New York Giants after that 90 Super Bowl would have gone to four straight and won them all. But they didn't get back. In came the Redskins. And if it was easy, Redskins would have done it. But they didn't get back. Only we got back. And so it, that's the thing is it's so – NFLers know how hard it is to – to spend that much extra time in the postseason, have that much, then get back to your preseason and do it. The toll on our bodies was tremendous, and Marv was great about taking care of us. But uh, I've long winded in this answer, but it's just, it's, it, it, it's, it, I can't, winning one would have been great, but it doesn't diminish the, the greatness of those four teams. So you were on the line with maybe, maybe the greatest of all time, tight end Tony Gonzalez for his first two seasons. His numbers didn't, grow super large until about year three, but could you tell in prep and practice that he would become just one of the all-time greats at the position? Yeah, you know, you saw him come in, and he he had a lanky – he was lanky, but really well built. He had great bend, so he could – he got really good leverage on his run blocks. And at that time, you know, because of, like, Shannon Sharp, guys were becoming less tight end – and more H back tight end type stuff, and but he could win in space, win with his body, had incredible hands and leaping ability, um, and he seemed to have a real hunger to learn. And 
you know, that's the football side. You could tell um, on the personal side, he was just a puppy, you know, I mean, here we, he comes into a, and sits with a group of guys where even the, the tight end next to him is 32. All the linemen are 32, 33. <laughs> We're all looking around and here's this little kid, you know, 21 year old. So um, he was just a puppy, but you could tell he, he had a ton of talent. Glenn, you, you had the opportunity to play for three really stellar head coaches uh, while you were in the NFL, Marv Levy, Mar Marty Schottenheimer, and Jim Fossil. So could you tell us how each one's style uh, sort of differed from the other? Yeah, Marv was the thinking man's coach. Um, he believed in rest. He, he was the one of the very first, I believe Bill Walsh was the other one that was like, hey, listen, we, we're going to go no pads. We're going to go... I think after my third week, my rookie year, you never, you didn't put pads on the rest of the season. It was all about rest. He understood sleep cycles. You know, when we take long trips to go out West, you know, a lot of teams will get out there early or get out, you know, try to go a week early and get used to the three, the different time changes because you'll be it's gonna, what it's going to do to your body. And we'd fly in at the last possible minute, have a meeting, go to bed, wake up, play the game. He never, he understood that it, you actually want less time when you're away from home, then more time when you're away from home. You want to get get there and get back so that you never lose that rhythm. Um, Marty Schottenheimer was old school punch. You know, you loved I, – I loved how he had so much faith in his offensive line. If it was – he didn't care for the one we're going for, my guys will get it. And we did, you know, more times than not. Um, I, I Marty just didn't have the ability, I don't think, to turn over as much to his coaches as Marty did. And I think that's – Marv was able to really delegate to his coaches and say, that's your that's your job, you know that, I don't, let's go. Um, Jim Fossil was a real players type guy. Players loved him. He had been a player. He had uh, – he was a, a very innovative offensive mind. He brought in the most innovative offensive minds. Our offensive coordinator that by year with the Giants when we went to the Super Bowl was Sean Payton. Um in uh, John Fox was the defensive coordinator. So, you know, he he was very personable and people-oriented, but he was innovative and an offensive guy. And so that really, when you look at it, Marv was quiet. Uh, Marty was driving and would it would push you. And Jim was kind of your buddy, your friend. You wanted to win for him. <clears throat> Glenn, you were a starter in the Super Bowl versus the Ravens. Uh, and what is considered one of the greatest defensive teams of all time. Uh, what was the the feeling of the offense going into that game? And did the, the Ravens do anything different that you guys had saw on film or, you know, even watching them up close? No, I, I so our, our thought as an offensive offense was um, we know they're a great defense, but we have a great defense too. Our defense, I believe, was fourth that year in the NFL. Um so we knew we had a great defense. If we stay within one score, we were going to have a chance. And um, we did, you know, the first half. Matter of fact, it should have been a tie game at half. Uh, NFL did apologize after, or, you know, apologize, corrected themselves after, you know, like, yeah, that was a bad call. Should have been tie game. Um, because then we came out and run the opening kickoff back, and then they ran it back. So we would have been tied all the way through three. It's probably a little different game. Not saying we win. It's just a little different game. But once we were down two scores, we had to chase, and that's playing right into how good that defense was. You were playing into their strength. Um, you know, as good as uh, Ray Lewis was up front, you know, I, 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 as a as a linebacker, you got to give Sharper, who was – I thought Sharper had one of the best games I've ever seen him play. Um, of course, the, the, the late, great um, uh, Tony Siragusa on the line, Sam Clancy on that line. They had an incredible defensive line that kept guys off those linebackers so they could run and they could play. Um, yeah, I, I, I we just went in knowing we had to be one score down, and that was a game that we knew we, if we got farther than that, it was going to get away, and it did because that defense was so darn good. Uh, you touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, the NFL over the years has changed the rules to make the game safer and enhance the lives of players during and after football. Uh, you guys played a lot more games because you guys went to four straight uh, Super Bowls, so you played a lot more games than guys of your era. Um, do you have any lingering ailments that are result of football, and do you think the rule changes <laughs> are good for football? Well, okay, I have a lot of lingering ailments, but no, I don't think the I, I think the rule changes are good for football in the sense that 
the, the fickle fan, not the football fan, loves it. They love seeing more scoring. They love seeing more uh, passing. Um, they, they, they don't want it to be the NBA, but they want it to be close. Um, and I don't like the changes. Now, are the changes good for injuries? We don't know yet. It's way too early to tell. Obviously, um, you know, I think what the NFL did, they got, the, they got themselves in a bind when they didn't address the concussion issue originally. Um, and so, therefore, then when Mike Webster and that whole the CTE thing came out, you've seen a lot of really bad reporting on CTE and NFL and its and the correlations there. And because of that, the NFL had to act. They had to do something. And so, they, I think they went too far. But and we won't know if it helped at all, probably for 30, 40 years, because we won't have the studies. The, the guys that play under these rules, you know, it'll be different. Um, but I don't like what it's done to the game itself. I think it's made it. Um, it's it's not nearly as interesting for me to watch it because of the style of play. It's just I can I can watch NBA basketball, I can watch high school basketball, I can watch a seven on seven tournament if I want to see that kind of football. So Glenn, you've had a number of uh, broadcasting gigs over the years on various networks, including ESPN, Fox Sports, NFL Network, CBS Sports, NBC, uh, the Pac-12 uh, Network, and also the Arizona Cardinals preseason games. So what was that transition like uh, going from player to analyst for you? And, and which gigs have you enjoyed the most? Well, it, it was it was easy to go do that. I had uh, majored in that. And then when I was at uh, in Buffalo, I had my own radio show. You can't say that I had a TV show. When I got to the Giants, I was immediately tabbed by Coach Fossil, somebody who could speak to the media at will, um, no restraints. And so I did a lot of news uh, uh, going to the studio and, and – and being on set with guys. So it came naturally. Um, some of it did. Some of it didn't. I don't like being told what to say. That's still fine. That's why I won't do certain things. Um, but uh, it, it was a pretty easy transition for me. Now, as far as which one I liked the most, I think my original job at NBC with the uh, Arena Football League with Al Troutwig, I had was I was really, um, you were, I was at 30 Rock. I was downtown every weekend. And more importantly, I was with great, I was the most talented producers. Uh, Al Troutwig, maybe the most talented sports uh, reporter out there when it comes to being a host and a studio host and everything he does. He's got a great cadence and an incredible voice. So that was phenomenal. But I, I can't say I haven't enjoyed every one I've done. Um, I've liked all my gigs. And I think it just depends where I was at that life stage too. Well, thank you, Glenn, for joining us tonight. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on anytime. And uh, let's watch the rest of this draft, see what happens. I want to remind everybody, hit that like, subscribe, notification button. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night.